Hall City Council will come to order. Roll call. Naker, Prince, Tau, Tobert, Busuri, Jalali, Nelson, <coughs> Council President Bren Moen. Seven present, no one absent. Please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Um, before we start our meeting today, I just wanted to acknowledge the sudden passing of Rich Kramer, uh, a resident of St. Paul who is a Met Council member, a Planning Commission member, a Charter Commission member, and a huge uh, part of the civic engagement fabric of the East Side, a large part of which I represent, and I would just like to have a moment of silence on his behalf. Thank you. He will be missed. Consent agenda items 1 through 12 are before you for your consideration. Um, we will be pulling um, we'll be pulling item number 10 and we're, I'm trying to get um, some information from our attorney here. Are we pulling 7 for separate consideration or should it stay on consent? Okay, all right, so we'll be pulling item number 10 um, for separate consideration. Is there anything else that should be considered separately? All right, um, so seeing none, Mr. Tolbert moves the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The consent <coughs> agenda is adopted as amended. Item number 10, resolution 19-1606, approving the application with conditions per the Deputy Legislative Hearing Officer for Arcade Auto Body LLC doing business as Arcade Auto Body for an auto body repair painting shop license at 1346 Arcade Street. Mr. Basuri. Yes, so the new owner's business plan that was submitted as part of the licensing process, he wrote that he wanted to be allowed to um, allow the renters to operate their auto repair business until 8.30. Um, this caused some concerns with the surrounding neighbors. Um, they called our office, emailed, and I was able to talk to the business owner, and he voluntarily agreed to cut back two hours um, in the operation. So he will be closing at 6.30, so we added an amendment to the uh, resolution, and that is item number 14 um, in the, the license, I think. So, um, and that reads, the hours of operation on Monday through Thursday shall be limited to between 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Okay, so that is version two in Legistar? Yep. All right, so is there any discussion on that motion? All right, so Mr. Bissari moves version two in Legistar. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The resolution is adopted as amended. Item number 13, resolution <coughs> public hearing 19-207 ratifying the assessment for the 2018 Street Maintenance Service Program Mill and Overlay, Western Avenue from Larch to Front. Public hearing was held on August 21st. All right, this is um, for us for final vote. Is there further discussion on item number 13? All right, um, seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. And who moved? Um, Ms. Snaker, Mr. Tell. Six in favor, one opposed, being Councilmember Prince. The resolution is adopted. Item number 14, resolution public hearing 19-206, ratifying the assessment for the 2018 Street Maintenance Service Program Mill and Overlay, Franklin Avenue from Trunk Highway 280 to Pelham. Public hearing is held on August 21st. Any further discussion on this item? I move to approve. Ms. Nelson moves to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion, motion prevails. Six in favor, one opposed, being Councilmember Prince. The resolution is adopted. Item number 15, resolution public hearing 19-208, ratifying the assessment for the 2018 Street Maintenance Service Program Mill and Overlay, Prior Avenue from University to Minnehaha. Public hearing was held on August 21st. Any final discussion on this item? Seeing none, Ms. Nelson moves approval. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. 
Six in favor, one opposed, being Council Member Prince. The resolution is adopted. Item number 16, Resolution Public Hearing 19-209, ratifying the assessment for the 2018 Street Maintenance Service Program, Millen Overlay, 3rd Street from Ruth Dipping Knight. Public hearing was held on August 21st. And any final discussion on this item? Seeing none, Ms. Nelson moves approval. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Six in favor, one opposed, being Council Member Prince. The resolution is adopted. The St. Paul City Council will recess. Yes. Um, the library board meeting is called to order. Roll call. Ren Moen, Basuri, Jalali Nelson, Naker, Tao, Tobert, Chair Prince. Seven present, no one absent. Resolution 19-1585, requesting that the city levy property taxes for the library agency. Is there any discussion of this item? I will say that the budget before us does not take into consideration the 42,000 cardholders who returned to the library after we made the momentous decision last year, to, and a good decision, to eliminate fines and fees. Nonetheless, I want to assure the St. Paul friends and St. Paul Library users that the library board will work throughout this fall to bring the library materials budget up to an appropriate standard. Um, with a motion from Mr. Tolbert, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is adopted. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The resolution is adopted. Ms. Naker moves to adjourn. The St. Paul City Council is back in order. Roll call. Naker, Prince, Tao, Tobert, Busseri, Jolly, Nelson, Council President, Bren Moen. Seven present, no one absent. Item number 17, resolution 19-1587, approving a 2020 maximum property tax levy for the Housing and Redevelopment Authority. Mr. Mr. Tolbert. Uh, we discussed this at the two o'clock meeting and um, we had unanimous approval at the, um, by the HRA and I would move approval. Okay. Um, any fun further d uh, discussion on the HRA uh, levy, or maximum property tax levy? Seeing none, of the motion's been made. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The resolution is adopted. Item number 18, resolution 19 1572, approving a 2020 maximum property tax levy for the city of St. Paul. And we're going to get a staff report on this one. I, and I do want to um, acknowledge that we have some, some fresh faces, people I haven't seen in the chambers before. And today we're having kind of a strange meeting. So I just wanted to share. Um, so you folks um, uh, understand um, what we're doing. To, uh, today is the day that under the Minnesota statutes are required to set the, the levy limit, the top amount that our, our city can levy um, for our, our library, for our general fund, and for our housing and redevelopment authority. And so um, we still have three months to go through the budget, but we can't go any higher than the limit that we set today. Um, and because we, we are all in uh, different commissions, uh, wearing different hats, but the same people, we have to adjourn and call the meeting back to order. So it's a little funny um, as we're uh, trading roles, and sometimes it's a little clunky as well, but that's what we're doing. Um, and so it's an important day that you're here, and we're glad to see you. But I just, in case you were wondering why, why Ms. Prince was banging on the table with her name plate. Um, that's, that's what's going on. <laughs> so we're, thanks for the interruption, but I was noticing people coming in that I don't normally see in the chambers, and it's wonderful to have you here, and I wanted to bring you along. So, Ms. Earl. Thank you. Uh, Council President Brenmo and Council Members, uh, the resolution you have in front of you is the final of the max levy resolutions that you'll be considering today as City Council. Um, this resolution approves the max levy for the city, and that includes uh, the debt, library, city, and port authority portions. Um, the total resolution includes the mayor's proposed amount of uh, $163.6 million for the levy, um, which is the 4.85% increase over 2019. Um, additionally, the resolution adds an amount to fund um, organized collection should the ordinance be repealed in November. That adds another $27.1 million to the levy um, and an additional 17.38% over 2019. Um, so we get to a total of 22.23% of an increase and um, about $34.7 million total um, of, a, of an increase over 2019 levy. 
Um, so the total levy, including um, all of those elements I just mentioned, and the library um, that you just approved as the library board requesting to levy on the city's or on the library's behalf, um, is one hundred and ninety million seven hundred forty-five thousand four hundred sixty-one dollars. Um, and this is, as you know, a maximum, so it can be reduced, as you just mentioned, over the next um, few months to the final levy that you adopt in December. And let me just ask you a question, again, partially for people in the chambers and partially just for clarity's sake. A lot of times when we're talking about our levy, a levy increase, people translate that to mean my taxes are going to go up 23.23%. Mm -hmm. Can you explain the difference? I know this is a tough one, but the difference between what we're doing here with the levy uh, versus what is it? What would be a tax increase or a factor in a tax increase? Sure, um, Council President Fredmont, this is the total that the city is going to collect in order to fund um, the city library debt, um, and then on behalf of the Port Authority. So this increase doesn't translate to what a, an individual property owner will see. That's going to be dependent on what's happening with their property and the changes in property value for other properties in the city. Um, so this is a levy that's spread over the pie of tax base in St. Paul. What happens to your individual property will depend on factors that um, are really specific to your home or your business. And so it's, um, I'd be very surprised to find someone who actually sees this um, percentage just because there's so many other factors that go into your final levy amount. The largest one being the, the value. Yes, the of value your of your home, which we see we see the median home. Um, you know, that's a good example of the median value changes, and that drives a lot of the, um, you know, when you look at the median property, that drives a lot of the changes in the property tax that that particular property will see, um, in addition to increases in levies that you and other jurisdictions will approve over the next couple months. Right, and the city is about a third of the mm -hmm. property tax bill. Okay, a little less. Okay, um, are there any questions for Ms. Earl? Okay, thank you very much for that thank staff you. report. Um, any comments from council members? Ms. Prince? I will be voting against the levy today. Um, for the past six weeks, I have been meeting with my constituents at their doors as I run for re-election. I hear a consistent theme. The city needs to get back to basics, public safety, parks, libraries, and street maintenance and stop continually raising property taxes as if we elected officials had a blank check. The mayor's budget with the underlying levy increase of 4.85% cuts public safety, the library materials budget, imposes a fee for after school care for kids, and includes a $750,000 program that will not even be operational in 2020. In fact, this three-quarter of a million dollar program is in partnership with Minneapolis. And Minneapolis, with a $1.6 billion budget, has not put one dime into this program in its 2020 budget. In conversations with the mayor, we reached an impasse related to my concerns with his proposed budget. The second part of the levy increase is 17.4% which we will levy on advice of council and in anticipation of taking over payment of the trash contract if the voters vote no on November 5th. When I talk to my constituents at the door, they say, is that a threat? You're telling us if we vote against garbage, you'll raise our taxes 17%? No, it's not a threat. But it is also not the only option we have open to us related to the trash referendum. The contract includes a force majeure clause that nullifies the contract in the event of an act of God, a legislative or judicial action. This option, raised by judges hearing this case, remains unexplored. Two years ago, this council was compelled to vote for another huge increase of 23.9% maximum levy, resulting from another lawsuit pertaining to right-of-way assessments. This lawsuit could have been settled at the outset before we went to court for $11,000. But the then city attorney chose instead to fight all the way to the Supreme Court, where, as in this case, we also lost. In November 2017, I voted no on the trash contract. Based on the concerns of my constituents that it was too expensive, it didn't create an incentive for waste reduction, 
and it was clear that waste management was poised to buy out the small local haulers that we entered into a consortium with to keep in business. The contract, as we have seen, was rife with unintended consequences. In repeated efforts to enter into good faith negotiations with the haulers continue to go nowhere. I am not going to follow up one mistake after another, after another, by presuming that a bad trash contract needs to be assessed to all of the city's property taxpayers. So I will be voting no. Um, so Ms. Prince, just to refocus a bit, um, we're voting on the levy limit today, right. not the budget. Right. Um, and so I'm curious, given that you are opposed to the limit that's been presented, do you, would you like it to be higher or lower? Um, or do you have a different proposal? Well, I, I actually, no, I don't have a different proposal. Okay. Um, I have problems with the underlying 4.85% um, and my inability to get anywhere with the mayor on it. And I, I am presuming that anything I propose now um, is, is not go going to be accepted by my colleagues. If there's an interest in our discussing a lower levy limit, then I'm happy to entertain that idea. Yeah, and I'm just asking for clarity's sake. You're, you are protesting the trash portion of this, the four, and then also the 4.8%? Yeah. Because you would like it to be lower. No, I would like it to include different things. Okay. Ms. Naker. Thank you. Um, I, uh, I appreciate Councilmember Prince's sentiments, and I, I also would say that I am open to discussing alternative proposals if there are um, proposals today. And this is a, a very hard vote to take. One of my top priorities when we started this budget process was to keep our levy low. Um, I've been hearing near universally from my constituents that they need a break after many years of tax increases. I'm sure all of us have been hearing very similar things from our constituents. I doubt anybody is clamoring for um, a double-digit levy increase. So to vote for a 22.23% increase is really painful. And my strongly held hope is that we can bring this down dramatically by the time we actually set the levy in December, which is not what we're doing today. But given the uncertainty with regard to our organized collection ordinance, I believe this increase is the responsible thing to do to protect the city and to make sure that we can meet our obligations to our residents no matter what happens. And I know as I'm sitting here saying this that this will not be the popular thing to do, this will not be a popular vote to take, but I'm not here to do what's popular, I'm here to do what's right and what's responsible, and that's what this vote is. Mr. Vissuri. I will also not be supporting this or any budget increase this year, um, and here's why. While this is my first uh, city budget as a council uh, member, I have planned many budgets in the past, personal, organizational budgets, and, and for my business as well. Certain budgeting principles are universal, such as not spending more than you have, separating wants from needs, and prioritizing immediate needs from needs that, that may be postponed. Last December, my colleagues here at this table congratulated themselves on all their hard work of cutting the mayor's 2019 proposed budget levy down from 11.5 to just 10.46. To put this in this perspective of the seniors that I represent in Ward 6, uh, cost of living adjustment from Social Security was 2.8%. Let that sink in for a moment. At, in the same time frame, we added additional expenses to personal budgets of those same seniors and others through organized trash system, people who shared trash with neighbors, worked hard to reduce waste to their near uh, zero, or made other arrangements were forced to take on the city mandated system often at very elevated rates. Then this council, with exception of my esteemed predecessor, Dan Bostrom, accepted some bad advice from the city attorney's office and ignored the petition of more than 6,500 registers, voters who wanted to place this issue on the ballot and have their voice heard. This resulted in a lawsuit for which we fought our citizens all the way to the state Supreme Court, costing additional money. Now the mayor and many uh, on this council have threatened that if the people vote no on organized trash, we will punish them by raising 
their tax more than additional 17%. That would be tacked on the 4.85% that, that is already proposed. I know that pointing this out will not earn me any friends at this table or next door at the mayor's office, but frankly, that's not my concern. My job as council member for Ward 6 is to do what is the best interest of those that I represent in my ward and the east side. Thank you. And so just again to clarify, um, we're setting the levy limit, not the budget. So I just, you said you wanted no zero budget, uh, zero levy increase. Yes. No, so you wanted zero. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Nelson. Um, well, I would say, you know, um, I was sworn in on September 5th, 2018, and it's just over a year later. Um, I remember at the time that we were rolling out our trash contract, it went into effect on October 1, 2018. Um, so we're still less than a year out from it being implemented, and I am in my second budget um, in a year. And I do, um, I do feel that the, the vote and the parameters of it today reflect a sort of unprecedented situation that we we're in. I didn't know in a year from now that we would be here. I didn't have the chance to shape this trash contract or even vote on it, but I've made it my, uh, my duty to understand the conditions that led us here. Um, I just, uh, I guess what I think is important to lift up is I would object to characterizing setting this max levy um, to account for the contingency that could arise as a threat. Um, I believe this council is working to operate with the legal guidance that we have, including from the highest court in the state that hasn't issued further information about um, the outcome of this pending referendum that happens um, later this year. So as we head into this year of unknowns, I think it's worth saying I take very seriously both um, the potential um, unfolding unknowns that we don't know and also our obligation to be ready in case the um, very unexpected turn of events happens. So I, um, I view this as uh, making the choice that we can make to give the parameters we need under the current information that we have. Um, I am going to support um, voting for the additional piece of the levy that's just the 4.85%. There's a lot of priorities within this council um, that we are grappling with in a very tough budget year. There's a lot of things that we would like to add, things that we need time to figure out how to pay for if we want to add them, things that are being taken away that we want to challenge, and um, this is giving us the parameters to talk about that. So um, this is the next step in this ongoing process. Um, I'll be voting in support today and working to um, bring these costs down as much as possible as we figure out our budget for the coming year. Mr. Tom. Thank you, Council President. Um, so my, my thought on this is that I'm not entirely happy or satisfied with um, this budget uh, that was proposed initially. I think that gun violence, public safety, it's a big concern in this city that we continue to struggle with that. I, I wish we would have more uh, resource and opportunity uh, to dismantle the root cause of gun violence to increase public safety. Um, I don't see enough of that in this budget. Um, I do see that the administration is putting $5.2 million into AMA role and, and without community process, I, I disagree with that. Uh, there's a lot of things that's good about this budget, but there's a lot of things that I have questioned about, such as charging kids to go to rec check, and we brought that up earlier this morning in our budget session. But I think um, those who are paying attention, um, and I, I would make uh, you know, clarify a little bit here that the position we're taking today to set the max levy is given as it is today is probably the best uh, strategy or for us to set it at 22 or, or set it the way that we have today just in case the referendum doesn't pass. And um, it's not a difficult, it's, it's not an easy decision and not an easy vote because every year when we set the levy, my ward, Ward 1, the North End, Frogtown, we, we get hit with the highest uh, tax hike. And, it's, and I live in Frogtown, and I know how challenging it is for my neighbors, especially those who are on fixed income, renters. Um, and so, but I think that today's vote to set the max levy the way it is, is the most responsible thing that I think I can do um, at this moment. And I, and I hope that um, if, if in a 
in the world that it should be. I would love to have enough funding uh, so that we can have uh, uh, we can have a strategic gun violence strategy, anti-gun violence strategy, public safety strategy, uh, invest in shot spotter and all those different things that I really care about and really want. Um, but uh, but we shouldn't take away what we need to do in the responsibility of council member for this city. And so I will be voting in support of the Max Levy as it is presented today. Thank you. Mr. Tolbert. Yeah, I'm gonna be um, supporting the uh, Max Levy today. As, as my colleagues and as Ms. Earl all stated very clearly, um, we're kind of in a unique position because on, based on state law, we have to set this Max Levy um, while there's still a lot of unknowns. One of the unknowns is, um, you know, what the final budget will look like. Um, you know, I know there are things that we all would like to see in there. Um, I would suggest that anybody who doesn't want to support any levy limit um, would bring proposals forward on where to cut as well, um, because that's what's going to have to happen um, if, 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 if you don't want to support any levy limit at all. But in terms of this actual budget, um, we have a lot of unknowns. One, we have unknown how the final budget's going to look. Um, you know, we have a lot of work to do. We're still in our, our council policy stage and we're all pushing for different things, whether it's the question on police officers on, or funding for the police department, funding in parks, um, new fees like rec check or things like that. I think there's a lot for us to work out and um, I look forward to working with you guys over the next couple of months on that. And the other big thing, obviously, um, the, the, the biggest unknown and um, is, you know, really the placeholder or contingency. Um, for the trash referendum. One, we don't know what the results of the referendum are gonna be. Um, we will not know that until probably late on November 5th or November 6th, whenever Ramsey County elections um, finishes that. Uh, and two, as uh, Ms. Prince pointed out, we do not have a Supreme Court opinion yet, and we do not know what the answer on force majeure is going to be. We don't know what the answer on force majeure and damages would potentially be and what the different options the Supreme Court could bring forward on. That's a lot of what ifs. Um, and I think it would be um, you know, reckless of us not to have a contingency plan and to be prepared for those what ifs. Um, those are some very, very big what ifs. And I think that's why obviously nobody wants to um, have our final levy be this. And I, I, I don't want it, I'd like it lower than 4.85. But we also have a responsibility as, when we're governing um, to keep that contingency plan and keep that responsible um, thing open because there are so many what ifs that we will find out over the next couple of months. And then we can have um, a real discussion here on what the final levy should be and what that final budget should look like uh, once we have more facts that have not been answered yet um, there. So I'm gonna be supporting this. Um, as, you know, as, as part of having that contingency plan there. Um, and I look forward to working with you guys on the actual budget uh, when some of this, when we have answers to some of those results from the Supreme Court and from uh, the voters. Great, and it, so it sounds like there's, the support is in the room, so I'm not gonna belabor the point. I agree with um, many of the points my colleagues made. I think the, the most um, unanimous of all is just that um, this is an unenviable position to be in. Nobody wants to set a levy at 22.23, um, especially so early in the process, but because we're required to put a uh, limit, did you have something, Mr. Tao? You can finish. Oh, go ahead. I mean, to uh, Councilor uh, Member Tober's point, the, I think the key word here is contingency plan, and it's just like, you know, if we're on a football team, we have a starter, a quarterback, but we gotta have a backup in case something happened and so and in a sense this is exactly what it is great thank you um, um so yes so i mean because be the requirement actually to have this vote this early is so that the county can prepare an estimated tax statement and this is in the name of transparency and so this is driven by this um, requirement, but it is unfortunate because there are so many unknowns. I think that's a good way to put it. There's a lot of unknowns, particularly um, the budget. We've heard from four of the city or the major de um, city departments, and I'm going to just um, name 
that the council ha has prioritized several areas where it believes that we need more information and input and debate. So I think that um, we asked the mayor for a, a low levy limit. That was our unanimous council priority. And we got back a levy of 4.85, which is, which is low. Um, and it's a budget that's been pretty painful for us because a lot of our priorities, <laughs> things that we value, have been squeezed or are eliminated. Um, and so we have identified um, a focus on public safety investments such as um, staffing, the police academy, community youth ambassadors, um, violence intervention programs such as the Cure Violence Program, um, mental health and community wellness initiatives, um, other community first public safety ideas like the People's Cabinet, um, alternatives to policing that reduce crime, improve technology and data outputs like ShotSpotter. Um, we're also looking for resources to enforce the $15 minimum wage, which is something we said we would do. Um, preserving uh, downtown business district investments as well as um, seeking dollars to fund library materials and looking at rec center fees. So there's a lot still in front of us that we need to, to work through. And then also, um, I didn't think, uh, correct, that contingency is a great word. I've been calling it a placeholder um, because we also don't know uh, what is before us with the Supreme Court decision. It is responsible, it protects our city's services, it protects our bond rating. And by the time we actually pass the levy in December, these unknowns will be known. And this council has proven that it can and will bring the levy down. And so that is my commitment um, as well. So um, we will have a roll call vote on this. Mr. Tolbert moves the max levy. This is setting the max levy, Mr. Copeland. Roll call. Naker? Yes. Prince? No. Tao? Yes. Tolbert? Yes. Busuri? No. Jalali Nelson? Yes. Council President Bren Moen? Yes. Five in favor, two opposed. Those being council members Prince and Busuri, the resolution is adopted. Item number 19, second reading of ordinance 19-60, amending chapter 66 of the legislative code pertaining to overnight shelters. This ordinance is laid over to October 2nd for third reading public hearing. Item number 20, resolution public hearing 19-331, amending the financing and spending plans in the Office of Financial Services in the amount of $903 for the gift of travel expenses from the Heartland Alliance and Mott Foundation for city staff members Maureen Karcher Ramos and Ikram Kaliso to attend the Upper Midwest College Savings Account Consortium convening. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to this item? Seeing none, Ms. Naker moves to close the public hearing and approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The public hearing is closed and the resolution is adopted. Item number 21, resolution public hearing 19-317, authorizing the Department of Parks and Recreation to accept funds in the amount of $115,000 from the Capital Region Watershed District, authorizing the proper city officials to execute an agreement with the CRWD and amending the financing and spending plan for the Midway Peace Park project. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to this item? Seeing none, Mr. Tom moves to close the public hearing. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And Mr. Tao, any comments on this before we approve? No, Council President. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The public hearing is closed and the resolution is adopted. Item number 22, resolution public hearing 19-319, amending the financing and spending plan in the Department of Parks and Recreation, the amount of $250,000 for funds granted from the DNR's Outdoor Recreation Grant Program for the Lower Landing Park Project. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to this item? Seeing none, Ms. Naker moves to close the public hearing and approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The public hearing is closed and the resolution is adopted. Item number 23, resolution public hearing 19-327, approving the application of Minneapolis St. Paul Magazine for sound level variance for amplified and live music during the smoke out event on September 28th at Kick and Case Market, 928 7th Street West. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to this item? Seeing none, Ms. Naker moves to close the public hearing and approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The public hearing is closed and the resolution is adopted. 
Item number 24, Resolution Public Hearing 19-329, approving the application of Tom Schroeder Waldman for a sound level variance for amplified music during the Waldman Oktoberfest on September 27th to the 29th at 445 Smith Avenue North. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to this item? Seeing none, Ms. Nanker moves to close the public hearing and approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The public hearing is closed and the resolution is adopted. Item number 25, resolution public hearing 19-326, approving the application of Minnesota United, FC, and Allianz Field for sound level variance for amplified music during the Minnesota United FC versus Sports in KC MLS game on September 25th at 400 Snelling Avenue North. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to this item? Seeing none, Mr. Tao moves to close the public hearing and approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The public hearing is closed and the resolution is adopted. Item number 26, resolution public hearing 19-328, approving the application of Immune Deficiency Foundation for sound level variance for outdoor music and announcements during the IDF Walk for Immune Deficiency on October 5th at Como Park. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to this item? Seeing none, Ms. Nelson moves to close the public hearing and approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The public hearing is closed and the resolution is adopted. Item number 27, resolution public hearing 19-323, approving the application of Anderson Race Management for a sound level variance for outdoor music and announcements during the running home for Jacob event on September 29th at Phelan Park. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to this item? Seeing none, Mr. Bussuri moves to close the public hearing and approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The public hearing is closed and the resolution is adopted. Legislative hearing consent agenda items 28 through 89 are before you for your consideration. Good afternoon, Ms. Mormont. Good afternoon, Council President Brenmo and Council Members. I am aware of just one person here to testify, and that is for item number 40. Item number 40, RLHTA 19-607, appealing or ratifying the appeal special tax assessment for property at 612 Cook Avenue East. Ms. Marmond. Council President, um, this is an appeal of a garbage hauling bill for the first quarter of 2019. The amount um, proposed in the assessment is $44.78. Uh, what we're looking at is an amount that's a little bit unusual compared to what the garbage rates are, and it reflects um, an adjustment that the hauler made. Indeed, um, Mr. Copeland was originally charged um, for too large of a container, and so um, they decreased the uh, proposed assessment downward to be $44.78. Uh, the content of Mr. Copeland's uh, comments weren't related to the amount of the uh, assessment itself, but rather um, relating to process on uh, garbage hauling issues in general. Great. Are there any questions for Ms. Mormond? No. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to this item? Welcome. And you don't need to adjust the microphones. Just stand, just stand yes. right between them. You're a pro. And I thought today I'd start with a little humor. You know, I read in the, I read in the paper about uh, Choo Choo Bob being Choo Choo Bob Day. So, oh. happy Choo Choo Bob Day. It's a pretty sad day, though, for our city, uh, in spite of Choo Choo Bob. You know, to turn this council into a collection agency for waste management is really, really quite a fall. And you know, you mentioned at the top, Madam President, and I learned it uh, just when you announced it, the death of uh, Richard Kramer, he and I had the distinction of both serving as chairs of our Charter Commission. And uh, you know, we can do better than this as a city. We can do a lot better than this. And I hope that we will. And uh, you know, uh, 
the fact that we can't have any input before you adopt the proposed levy. Mr. And Copeland. yet we can talk about, you know, my garbage bill. Mr. Copeland. Uh, you know, it's, it's quite a parallel uh, in the universe. Mr. Copeland. Yes. Just to um, make a slight correction, the council actually held a public forum um, in advance of the levy limit this year as a very, it's a first time we've done it. So to say that we didn't take public input is not true. Nevertheless, yeah. my friend, we're here to discuss item number 40, and I'd like you to stick yeah. with the agenda item. Right, and I and at the uh, risk of angering any members on the council, I, I'll uh, congratulate Ms. Mormon and her staff because they did see that that adjustment was made to my bill. So you're doing a good job on, on that department. And uh, I got a new bill from my friends at Waste Management, which is a repeat of the last bill. So, you know, we got some communication issues there. And, uh, you know, all I can say is, uh, I, I hope by the time we get to December that uh, we've made a big change and we don't have to talk about garbage every week at this uh, meeting hall that should be for the people and making life better in St. Paul and safer for our residents. And, and frankly, you know, to spend $647 a year on getting rid of the stuff we don't want, that's no bargain. And frankly, assessing every taxpayer in the city the cost of collection is no way to reduce the bill. So, you know, you're making the situation much worse with what you're doing. And, uh, but I do recommend if people have a problem with their bill, they should go see Ms. Mormon. She does a good job over there with uh, getting some changes because it's hard to get through to waste management. Thank you, your uh, president. Mr. Bussuri moves to close the public hearing. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion prevails. Mr. Bussuri. Uh, thank you, Mr. Copeland, for coming and, uh, and sharing your opinions. And I move the recommendation of uh, the hearing officer. There's been a motion. Any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The, the resolution is adopted. Okay. And that's the only... House uh, President Brindle, I'm not aware of anyone else here to testify, although there might be somebody in the room. All right. Um, so... Are you, do you have a legislative hearing uh, item between 28 and 89? Can we get your address? Sure, 2140 Bayard. 2140 Bayard? I did not conduct a legislative hearing on this item. What I would need to do is to go into the computer system find the assessment and then I can tell you which agenda item that uh, 2140 Baird might relate to. All right. One uh, moment. Right now I couldn't tell you which item it is. All right. I'm not seeing it. I it, see a Baird, it, but it not It is not that. on your agenda as an individual item. I believe it would appear if it is on one of these assessments rolls um, between items 82 and 89. So I can uh, take a look at that for you. Okay. Excuse me. All right, Ms. Mormon is just gonna cross check which item. So, and um, sorry for the formality, but just that keeps your testimony attached to the proper place in the public record. Okay. Um, so this will likely be the last item on our agenda. So if we want, I don't know how long this is gonna take Ms. Mormon. Mm -hmm. Like, is this a, okay, this is a one minute thing. Cause if it was 10, we could always, Go to news from the wards. It's a good time to find your news from the wards. Council President Bren Mullen, um, the assessment for this address for delinquent bills for the first quarter of 2019 was already levied on September 11th of 2019. So um, the council did address this matter. There is another pending assessment uh, coming forward, but that won't be um, in front of you for public hearing until November 13th, I believe. Okay, so the first item has been, has already been levied. 
and there's a pending item that will come before us on November 13th. Yes. Okay. All right, I'm just working on this guy here. Um, so, so sir, it sounds like your, your public hearing on this will be in November, okay? Sorry about that. Okay, so we will look now at the balance of the legislative hearing um, consent agenda. If you have an item between number 28 and 89 that has not been heard, uh, this is your public hearing. All right, seeing none, Ms. Nelson moves to close the public hearing and approve. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion prevails. Seven in favor, no one opposed. The public hearing is closed and the consent agenda is adopted as amended. And before we adjourn, if folks have news from their wards, this is the time. Mr. Basuri. I just want to invite everyone um, that's here and watching at home to the Harvest, uh, Harvest uh, Festival Parade. Uh, it's this Saturday. I think it's the last parade of the year in our ward, so please come and join. Thank you. It starts at 12 o'clock. Right on. I'll be there. Um, Ms. Thinker. Thank you. The new and eagerly anticipated phase of uh, Higher Ground that Catholic Charities is opening is having a sneak preview today as we speak. Um, I think remarks are in 11 minutes, so everybody still has time to rush over there. This is going to be the place for additional housing and also for uh, services around the clock. So really an exciting amenity for downtown. Great. And that's something I know there's people on, uh, around the table <laughs> that have been working on for a long time. Oh, I thought you meant ready to go. So <laughs> No, so I think it's really worth highlighting and a great addition. Um, Ms. Nelson. Um, great. Well, there's something exciting happening Friday, September 27th from 3 to 6. Um, St. Paul Parks and the Minnesota United team and the U.S. Soccer Foundation and Target are celebrating new futsal courts opening at Hamlin Park. And this has been a um, long time in the making. There will be giveaways, snacks, soccer activities, fun for the whole family, and get to check out the new courts. So... Um, Hamlin Park is just off Snelling if you want to come to the Midway and see an awesome new asset in the community. Great. Ms. Prince. Yes. Um, Friday, September 27th, this Friday, starting around 6.30 p.m., come down to Swede Hollow um, at the site of the Swede Hollow Hinge Stones, which is where um, Art in the Hollow takes place, if you're familiar with that, just north of the Drury Tunnel. And um, come and enjoy delightful stories about Sweet Hollow and the Hams Brewery and watch the glow of the setting sun on the Red Brick Brewery. Um, see firsthand the sunset, and after the sun sets, the food and socializing begins, and it's with former Sweet Hollow residents and Hams employees, and everybody else is welcome. It's a beautiful event. There's a $10 suggested donation, but come no matter what. Thanks. Great. I know there's a secret spot in the tunnel down there that if you stand in it and sing, it sounds really beautiful, too. So <laughs> it's somebody amazing. there will likely be able to point out that out. <laughs> um, any other um, news from the wards before we adjourn today? All right. Seeing none, we are adjourned.